Have you ever wondered how to get a professional looking report written in Word? Well, that's what we're going to go through today. My name's Chris and I like to share on this channel the sorts of tools and experience that I've learned as being an engineer and a consultant to help anyone work through complex problems that they might face in the workplace. So for example, what I've put together here is a professional looking report in Word that anyone can use as a template. It gives you the basic building blocks of putting together a professional looking report uh, that can be submitted as part of, uh, submitted to a client or to other stakeholders for review, comment, update, and to look professional because if you submit a professional looking report, people are less likely to question the contents inside it. One of the first lessons I was taught. So <laughs> whether that's right or not, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, so I'm gonna run through how I got set up with these headings, how I set up the uh, headers and footers, how I put this picture and title together. I'm gonna go through all of that in this video. Uh, so feel free to follow along step by step. So I've brought up here the basics of what we're going to do today. We've got an introduction section, we've got an about us, we've got the purpose of this report uh, and the methodology of how we're going to meet it. So we're going to, what I'm going to take you through is how to uh, define the minimum components of a professional report, the paragraphs, the headings, the headers and the footers, the cover page, table of contents, lists and figures and tables. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a new style for these paragraphs. Uh, Click the more button next to the styles and create a new style. Now it's important to use styles to do this in Word so that you can apply the style everywhere it's important. One of the key things I find that, uh, one of the key mistakes I find that junior consultants make is to use these buttons over here. By keeping a consistent style throughout your writing, throughout your report, it really uh, brings forth the professionalism in the document. So people are less likely to question the contents if everything looks uh, neat and professional. So even if you don't agree with the style in the report template, yeah, and you can change it, but make sure you change it for the whole report, I'd highly recommend not using any of these buttons over here. Don't use any of the font or paragraph buttons to change. There is one exception under paragraph, but we'll get to that later on. Uh, so our style, so we set up the styles first for each of these things, and then we apply those styles in the right spot. So to set up the style for paragraphs, uh, we're gonna call it body and click modify. And then uh, style type should be for, uh, we'll leave it as linked. Our style based on, now we want to set the, because the body is going to be the base of our report, we want to change it to no style. Uh, and then style for the following paragraph. So after you press the return key at this end, at the end of the paragraph, it will, this is the box that says what the next style should be. Uh, so it helps you when you're typing. And uh, the next style should be body because after a body paragraph, typically you have another body paragraph. You can change that though. Uh, this is important for headings, which we'll get to later. So, uh, after that, we're going to set the font for our body style, just to be different. Uh, I'm going to set it to Arial, even though that's not very different, just to have something that's different from Microsoft Word's default. Uh, Arial is quite a uh, basic font. There's no real argument about it. So I just put Arial in, uh, click OK. Uh, and then the next one we're going to do is set the paragraph. After, before and after uh, the spacing for the paragraph, I like to use a little bit uh, less spacing afterwards and a little bit more before. Uh, we leave the line spacing at 1.08. It, it just allows a little bit of readability between the lines uh, and there's no indentation for this. Uh, now, some of the important ones that we can work with later on are here under line and page breaks, but we'll stick with, but for the base style, we'll stick with it like this. So that's our power, that should be our paragraphs done. And now body should come up here at the top. So we can format all of our body as on the body format. And you can see it starts to change the font and move things around a bit. So body, body, and body. Uh, now the things I've left alone here are going to be our headings. So we're going to define, first of all, uh, we want our headings to appear in the table of contents. So we want our headings to have this uh, one dot, for example, uh, and then one dot one uh, and so forth. So the way to do that is to use the list style. So to come up to the uh, multi-level list here, define new multi-level list. And if you ever need to change it in the future, you still click the define new button, which uh, I found a bit strange. So define new multi-level list and you go to number one. And because this is the top one, you just leave it as that uh, one dot. 
Uh, now click the more button to bring over where to link it to in the to link it to the heading style because we want our multi-level list to be linked to our headings. So the link level to style, so level one should link to heading one. Okay, and then level two should link to heading two. And then level three should link to heading three. Okay, good. Uh, now, I, this is still set up from the example I just put together, but uh, it's important for this number format. So entering the number format, for heading one, it's fine. Uh, it's fine as one dot. For heading two, what it looks, what it might look like to use something like this, just having an A or a B there. So simply remove that. And then the first step is to add in the number for this level. So numbers, one, two, and three. And then put a dot in front of it like that. And then go include from level one. So that will be 1.1. 1 .1. If we we're in chapter two, it would be 2.1. Uh, then we repeat the same process for level three. So in this case, we do, uh, for this level, it's one, and then we put in a dot, then we put in level two. So we're working backwards, oops. Then we put in level two, uh, and then we put in a dot, go back, and we put in level one. So one dot, one dot, one. Okay. Uh, then we want to change our... Now, on your uh, document, you might have different numbers here for the indent and alignment. So I like to keep them all aligned, all the numbers aligned on the left. And so the way I've done that is to keep the first one at zero, the second one at 1.27 centimeters, and the third one at 1.27 as well. Uh, and then to have the text aligned at, at 0 0.63. So I'll show you that one in a second when we hit OK. Now, oops. That is actually heading two. Okay, and this is heading one here. So you see one and one dot one. Now I don't actually like the way that that's uh, offset from the left. So uh, because we've set the list already as zero, it might be that this style is wrong over here. Uh, and I don't like the color or font either. So we're going to change this style to, so it says based on normal, that uh, we change it to format font and then change to Arial because I wanted all my things as Arial. Now this is heading one, I'm gonna change it to black as well. So I'm gonna make it bold and a bit bigger too because we really want our heading ones to stand out. So click OK. Uh, and now one thing I like to do is start every heading one on a new page. So I'm gonna go back to paragraph here, line and page breaks and then hit page break before. So every time we put a heading one into the document, it will put a page break before it. So every heading one will start on a new page. You click OK. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the paragraph again to see why it's offset so far from the left. Uh, and first line is this, no, so it should just be hanging because if it runs over, then it should hang uh, by that much. I also like to have a lot of space after my heading ones. So I'm gonna increase this quite a bit to 24, there we go. Okay, so that should, yes, realign it. Make it nice and big and bold and over on the left. Now let's do the same for heading two. Oops, heading, make sure we select this one. Modify heading two. And I highly recommend using these styles for everything you do. If there isn't a style that you want to apply and you're tempted to click these buttons, make a style instead. So follow along some of the instructions in this video if you're curious on how to make a style. So uh, heading two, our style is gonna be based on heading one. Uh, the following paragraph should be normal, yeah, uh, should be body actually, it should be body. Uh, then we click format fonts and we change it to black or we change it to Arial. Uh, we're still gonna have it bold, but we're gonna have it a bit smaller, let's say 16. And we change it to automatic, okay. And then we're going to look at the paragraph again to make sure it's left aligned. Now, like I said, I want everything over on the left and that. Hanging, uh, we put in a little bit before and a bit afterwards as well. Okay. Oops, I forgot that by setting it to, so you can see it's gone over to the next page. By setting it to be based on heading one, it's inherited the styles from heading one that haven't been overridden. And in this case, that page break before setting that I set has been uh, inherited. So we come back here, format, paragraph, line and page breaks, and untick page break before. 
So now heading two won't be on a new page. Uh, there is a, actually a little, there's a lot of space here. So I might come back to, whoops, what have I done? So I might come back to heading one uh, and the first level of heading and actually remove some of that space. I think it's a little bit too much. So I want to change paragraph and this spacing before, we're gonna set that down back to 12. Okay, so now we can apply heading, the second level of heading there. Uh, this can actually be its own new one there. And just to show you what heading two and heading three look like. So we apply heading two there, and then heading three will jump like that. But what we're gonna do, this is size 11. So what we're gonna do is set up I like to have a heading that maybe has a section across it. I'll show you how to do a new line, a line border for the heading. So heading three is going to be based on heading two. Uh, we're going to change the font again. You only have to do this once. Uh, so if you set up a new report template for your business or your company, your employer or, or whichever task you want to report on, say this project, then you only have to set this up once and you're set after that. Uh, so I'm going to change this to size 11 just to match the uh, normal text size, but I'm going to leave it as bold. I'm going to change it back to black and then click OK. And then we want it over on the left again because I don't like it indented like that. So we set that to zero and we do have uh, some spacing before and after as well. OK because the way I like to use heading threes is let's type in some paragraph texts, paragraph text. Uh, it, actually, I think the heading three looks a bit small. So let's strike, let's try to strike a balance here and change it to, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's say 14 and I'll also, I'll make it italic as well. And like I said, I'm gonna try putting a line above the top so you do that by coming to border and then we want to define the top border. Uh, so I don't know why it's taking so long to load. So we define the top border there and click OK. And now that puts a line above heading three there. OK, so now we can type in some detail here. So if we go and control P and you can see what that looks like without the paragraph marks that I've got on. Uh, it's starting to look a little bit like a professional report. Uh, that, that line probably isn't the best. Let's see if we can add a little bit of space in front of that line. So how do we do that? We can try paragraph and we can put some more space before. Let's try that. Nope, okay, undo. Uh, we can do modify and we'll try the border again. Uh, border and what options do we have uh, width applied to paragraph okay options maybe in here top ah okay so we can increase the space from the top let's make it uh, let's make it three point and click OK so that should be half the space okay done there we go, that's added a little more space there. So that, that looks a little bit nicer. Now what we're going to do is add a, so we've done paragraphs and headings. Let's do headers and footers. So in the footer, uh, come over here to uh, layout, no, insert, no, design. <laughs> I can't remember where footers are. Uh, come over here to, okay, so you come over here to insert and then footer and we just want to edit the footer because we're going to define everything ourselves. So once that pops up, it should bring us to the footer and we're going to, uh, I like everything right aligned for the bottom footer and we're going to put in the page number first. So page number. Okay, so we're going to come up to the quick parts and insert quick parts instead of the page number because it gives us a bit more control. So we're going to insert a uh, field and we're going to come down to page find in here page number, page, yep, there we go, uh, and select this uh, one, two, three. Now this will give us the page number there. Uh, we're going to, we're gonna give the current page out of the total pages. So we go again to quick parts, field, 
and select. Now I'm actually going to select the section page because uh, when it comes to section, the highest, no, the total section pages, because when it comes to putting in the cover page and the table of contents, we put them in a different section of the document so that we can uh, just count the number of pages that are actual contents in the document. So put those, put that in here. It's still two because there are only two pages in our section. Okay. Uh, now another. I'll get to actually, I'll show you that later on. We'll, fix, we'll come back to fix this up after we've put in the cover page and the table of contents. So after the page, we want to put in a reference number. Uh, every good report, good quality control, good document management should have a reference number. So reference number is engineer upgrade reports 0001. Okay. Uh, and we should also put in some sort of date to make it look good. Uh, now I'm recording this in September. So when we put in, I'm actually going to do it by, uh, in the practice run, I did do it by this date and time, but it didn't look so good. So make, so I do quick parts feel because I just want month and year. So come down to dates and this gives you the option to format. If you just do this insert date and time, you don't get the option to format. So uh, select September 20, and because of 2020, that sounds a bit ambiguous, it doesn't sound right. So I'm gonna put in four, all four digits for the year, September 2020, there we go. So that's the bottom of our report done. Let's come up to the header and define the header. Uh, again, I like to have this be uh, right aligned. So I like to have this be right aligned. And I like to put in, if I had a logo uh, ready for, if I had a logo in the right format, I could put it on here, but my logo currently isn't in the right format for where it's not, it's only suitable for the web. So I'm just going to call it uh, engineered upgrade. Uh, so for the name of the organization, and then we're going to put in the title of this report as well. So insert alignment tab rights. Okay, and this is introduction to professional reports. So the title of this report, now you can style those. Actually, I might make it a little bit smaller, the text. Uh, now, I'm gonna break my rule and not use the styles. You can set up a style for, uh, for the header and footer, but I'm just gonna be uh, quick and cheap today and set it to Arial because they're only set uh, what, once, twice in the whole thing, so not, not so bad. But I do recommend that if you're going to do this, take the time to set up a style for your header and footer. It's not that bad. Okay, uh, and again, we set this to, oh, I feel so dirty doing this. I feel so dirty uh, setting, the setting the font and text size by this, but uh, I'll be here all night if you want me to set these in the, uh, in the video for you as well, so, okay. Uh, right, now let's, now uh, what was next in our list? So we've done our paragraphs, we've done headings, headers and footers, uh, let's set up a cover page. So cover page is on its own, so new page. Uh, now cover page should be, uh, more like the rest of the report should be in its own section. So the cover page should be a separate section from the rest of the report. So word defines sections uh, by applying these, uh, say styles, headers and footers and things to different sections. So if we click on this layout and then breaks, and insert a new page station uh, section break, just fix up the pages there. Then we can start working on our title page in this section. And I'll show you why that's important in a minute when it comes to setting the header and footer, because at the moment it doesn't look so great to have this reference information things on the cover page. The cover page sells your report to the executives. So cover page has to be nice, clean, bring the point across. Uh, what we're going to do is define our title style. Uh, and I'm really only doing this because Word had the styles already because I should have done it for the header and footer as well. So we'll put in our title and we say professional report by engineered upgrade. And we're going to put in, uh, we're going to set this as the title style. Now I'm going to change this because I still don't like the Calibri format. I'm going to modify this, uh, right click and modify, change the font. So the font I'm going to use, I want it to be Arial again. 
I want it to be, I don't need it to be bold. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to do small caps. So this is where every letter is capitalized, but the true capitals are a little bit bigger. So we're gonna set that. And now we're going to set a subtitle. You'll notice I like everything to be left aligned as well. I don't like justified word. I feel word doesn't have a very good engine for justified text. Sometimes you get too many gaps between the word. So I always like to have my text left justified. So I'm gonna set up the subtitle as well, which is going to be a guide to professional reports. And again, I don't like this subtitle. I'm gonna change it back to uh, more of a default. So I see what they've done here. We're going to change the font to be a, well, we might leave the color, uh, but we'll change it to Arial. Uh, we'll leave it as regular. We'll make it a little bit bigger so it stands out. And what they've done is they've expanded the space between the characters. We're gonna change that back to normal. And then we're going to, I wanna add a little bit of space just before so that the lines look a bit better aligned. So we do add a little bit of space before. Okay, there we go. Uh, now the next thing that a cover page should have is a nice picture. So I'm gonna put in a insert, a nice picture. There should be some stock photos that we can use here uh, to show off our professional report. We're gonna put in a nice stock photo uh, once it loads up. Ah, okay, uh, let's pick, oh yes. Okay, we've got some nice stock photos coming up here. Uh, let's pick a collaboration. Let's do something nice like that. Now, uh, once it comes up, my computer's struggling a bit to record the screen and to uh, pick these photos. So we'll insert our nice collaborative photo. Let's see how that looks. Uh, now, it might also be an idea to change the margins on the first page only. And we can do that again, uh, thanks to these section breaks. So if we change the marginal layout of the first page, thanks to that section break we put in, it won't change on other pages. Oh yeah, that, that looks quite nice. So we'll stick with that. And what we'll do is I want this to dominate the page a bit more. So you can see, I'll just hit print preview and you can see, so you can see it without those tick marks. And once it does come up, it should, yeah, you can see here, it looks a bit plain compared to the next page. It doesn't really, it doesn't really feel like much of a cover page. So I'm going to decrease the margins on the side to make this feel more like a cover page. I mean, if we do that under layout uh, and we go to margins and we're going to change the first one to moderate instead. So that will give us a bit more space. Now we can increase the size of our picture as well. And that means it takes up more vertical space at the same time. So there we go. Now it's up to you whether how often you want to do that. Uh, it's up to you what sort of margins you want to use. But I, I feel it looks a bit nicer now having that picture just dominate. Uh, if this were a uh, report that I was handing in, I'd pick, pick a picture that's really relevant to really sell the report to the, uh, to the client, stakeholder, my manager, anyone like that. So the next thing in the report should be, on the cover page, it should be an understanding of who the report is from. So we call it engineered upgrade, upgrade. And I like to put this on the, um, I might come back up here because I like to put this one on the subtitle. You don't have to, but I like to put this one on the subtitle uh, style as well. So I might change this subtitle style just to be all caps. Uh, to make it stand out a bit more. So we're gonna go back and change this to all caps, uh, format, fonts, and change to all caps, because the subtitle is really uh, something that can show off a bit there. So, okay, so we've got a guide to professional reports, and I'm gonna put this on the subtitle style as well. Excellent, engineered upgrade. Uh, and then engineered, upgrade.com, so some sort of contact detail I like to put in, and the date as well, September 2020. Now, another good idea here is to put in a bit of quality control information. Oh, these should be, these should be on the body. Despite not being in the body, I believe that these should be on the body layer, body style. So I'll apply that. 
okay? Uh, and it can be a good idea to put in some quality control information such as who wrote the report, uh, such as the author, the date, the revision. So we have author, date, revision, and we'll do two of those. Uh, and then I've seen a few different ways of doing this, so it's up to you how you want to do it. Uh, if you feel your report's going to be go through quite a few revisions, it might be an idea to put uh, to set up your own quality control page that really outlines the revisions. You might see this at the start of some reports where they go through the uh, changes since the last report, and sometimes those changes because of the huge history of the document can be much bigger than the report itself. I, I've seen that, but this one's nice and simple. So we're going to do date. Uh, we're going to do author and we're going to do revision. Okay, so Word's offering me to save because it's looking like a complicated document and it doesn't want me to lose it. So these are our headings and we're going to count this upwards. So we're going to call it the 30th of September 2020. The author is me, Chris, and the revision is a draft. Okay. Uh, so there's a bit of quality control information. If you're interested in document control, quality control, and why these things are important, uh, hit subscribe because I'll be releasing a video about that shortly. Uh, and how to do it. How to do it simply because that's what this channel is about. I don't want to throw things at you about ISO standards or complicated document or quality control. No, things are simple on this channel and I'm going to share with you simple document control for normal people. So hit subscribe if you're interested in that video. So okay, so some uh, simple quality control there. Uh, next, we're going to do our uh, table of contents. So this is going to come after, we're going to insert a new section break here to do our table of contents because I don't want it to have that wider margin. So we hit uh, insert new section break on new page. Okay, and now we insert our table of contents. Uh, oops, it's references for table of contents. I have table of contents and we can just use any of the automatic tables because it's going to be uh, nice and simple from the, it's just going to come from the headings that we defined earlier. See it's already pulled up our introduction, our about us, purpose of this report and methodology. Uh, Word calculates those automatically. So the automatic table of contents is great. I haven't found a reason to replace it except for this heading. Uh, it is one of the defined styles and I like to replace it with something more appropriate to my report. So I come down here to TOC heading, modify, and we're going to change it to black and aerial because that seems to be the theme we're going for today. Uh, I would recommend being a little bit more creative than black and aerial for everything, but it's really up to you. If you have a color scheme for your business or a theme for your project, then use that one instead. So aerial, and everything else is the same. Just change that. Oh, and yep, change the font color as well. So there we go, nice and easy. Now, uh, what's missing here is some of the uh, list of tables or list of figures, so we'll get to that in a minute. What I'm going to do first though is define the list style itself. So we've got this list of uh, items here and rather than defining each of the style, uh, rather than clicking this button, because remember I said clicking that button is wrong, we're going to define a list uh, style to use. So the way to do that, we'll pull up here because we've already got a list paragraph defined, words just hidden it from us. So come down here and put them all on the list paragraph style. Now that's not great. There's no bullet point in the middle there and it's set to Calibri again. So we can right click on this and modify and we're going to set a bullet for us to use. We're going to first of all change it back to Arial. So change this to Arial and then OK. So everything's back to Arial and now we're going to put a bullet in as well. So we do that under numbering, I think it was. So put yeah, numbering and then bullets uh, and define new bullet. I'm going to pick a symbol to put in as a bullet. One of the symbols defined here, now this is the one I used last time, but it's not that great. It's uh, too low. So I'm going to pick a, another symbol instead. I'm kind of stuck on the math symbols here. So I'm not sure which one to pick. I might just go with that same one again. So we're going to use this symbol here. Click OK, click OK. And now that should put in a, a bullet there. Now, if you don't like the way that's indented over, you can uh, shift it back to the left under paragraph, but I'm just going to leave it now for simplicity. The next item on our list is a figure. 
So we're going to insert another figure and put a caption on it because captions are another style that you need to define yourself to make it a professional report. So we're going to put in just another stock photo from this device. I've done a lot of construction work in the past, so I'm going to select this construction photo to put in. So once that's popped in, uh, then we'll be able to set the caption for this photo. And then you can see the caption style. I actually like Word's default caption style, so I'm not going to change it too much. And then we're going to do the same with a table as well. Uh, yep. And then we go to insert caption. And we call it, uh, oops, this is a figure. Uh, figure one construction. Okay, so that's not a bad caption, but we can make it a bit nicer. So if we right click modify, I don't like, again, Calibri, we're gonna change it to Arial. Uh, I'm gonna be lazy and just change it over here this time. Arial, otherwise it's okay. And we're going to now insert a table to show the same thing for table captions. Uh, just a simple table because in the body of a professional report tables should have captions so we're going to put in this table with right click and select insert caption and we call this uh, no we call this table this is a table caption so first table okay so we've got the table in there uh, and now we can add our list of tables and figures to the uh, table of contents I've just noticed the mistake that uh, we didn't want this footer showing up here. So I'll go back and change that footer in a second. But uh, first, before we do that, we're going to go to references. We're going to insert table of figures. And here we select table of figures, uh, caption label table, okay. And now we do that again to insert figures, uh, change this to figure there as well and that should come up figure one construction. Okay, there we go. We've got our list of tables, list of figures. Excellent, so table of contents looking good. Remember one thing I said earlier was that we didn't want our uh, footer here in the first section. So what, what we do is change, we come down here, change it, remove this link to previous, and that should now be by itself, and we can delete this information here Okay, then we delete that. So now our report should be page one. Oops. I've made a mistake. Uh, I forgot to delink the, forgot to delink the, this one as well. So link to previous, okay. Now we can delete the header and footer. Remember to delink both the header and the footer from the previous. So there we go. So now on our front page, there's no information about the document uh, and there's none of that meta information about the document. We're presenting exactly what's in the document. We're gonna keep it off our table of contents page as well. And then we're going to put it in there. So I'll hit print to show you what it's all like. So I'll give you the print preview because that should be it. So we should have now a professional looking report that has a cover page, a table of contents, and some of the key elements of a report defined inside for you to use as styles. So we go and look at the cover page. We've got our professional report by Engineered Upgrade. We've got some of the details, uh, a guide to professional reports, a nice picture. Uh, it's at a different margin as well. We've got our table of contents. You can jazz this up a little by uh, moving the table of contents over and putting some graphics down the side. If you're interested in how to do that, please leave a comment below and I'll make another video about how to make professional reports look nicer. Uh, and then uh, we've got our introduction, some nice headings, paragraphs, and we've got a list, some figures and tables as well. So they're the main elements of a professional report. If you're interested in finding out more about when to use these sorts of things, please hit subscribe. I've got some videos coming up about how you can improve your professional writing by using lists, figures and tables to really help explain things in a report. So you're not just reading blocks of text all the time. So hit subscribe and I'll be releasing that video shortly and hopefully I'll see you there.